In this video, I decided to rank at Heathrow. So let's go take a little look. Right, so I thought, you know what? I'd come to Heathrow, into my big jacket, just because it's incredibly cold out today. It's about two, three degrees. I can pull the laptop out. I can do some work on YouTube and stuff. Uh, I've got all my food and my meals with me. The other cool thing with this as well, it's a giant taxi rank, uh, but we'll park in rows like this. Rather than like a generic taxi rank, which is just a giant queue, this does queue, but you might get 20, 30 cabs in one row, then another row starts, then another row starts. It basically means that you can leave your cab in its row and all the other rows can go before yours. So there's a bit more of a chance to relax rather than constantly budging up your cab on the rank. There's toilet facilities, there's a canteen. It's not a luxury by any stretch of the imagination. I sometimes sort of liken it to, um, you know, a bit of a, a hostile sort of prison environment. So we'll see. I'm going to um, start, you know, relaxing, do a little bit of work and uh, we'll have a look at the progress. Just gone into the cabin and uh, topped up my, my card, my tag. And the cabin's kind of like, I suppose, just an office really where you just go and get one of these boosters. So you have to register for it. You pay, I think it's about 15 pound for the booster. You pay 15 pound for the tag. And then you have to put some credits on the tag. That's my tag. It remains property of Heathrow. Bloody, 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 blah. There's movement, there's activity. We're crossing over to the other side. There's like a little reader or a magnet that kind of reads this as you go into the park and then it lifts up the barrier to let you through. It's kind of a clever system because any other rank in London, all across the UK, I guess, is like an honesty policy. You just join the back of the rank and it is effectively a giant queue. But that doesn't stop someone from maybe budging into the queue halfway when you're not looking or if there's a driver who's not paying attention. So the good idea with the Heathrow system is that it's got a record of what order the drivers should be in. It's kind of confusing <laughs> when you come over into the feeder part, right? It still gives me a little bit of anxiety. I remember the first time doing it, it just makes no sense. I always hoped there was always a cab that I could follow because the way it works is that you rank from the right to the left. If it's half empty, it's quite easy to see because you generally just gotta just start from the right, scan from the right over to the left. So what we've got to do now is we wait in this feeder park four hours likely, and you then get sent off to a terminal. You just get out on the exit barrier, it lets you out and it'll just say terminal five or terminal two, whatever it may be. And then you get to go to that terminal and then you join that rank. It's not as lucrative as working in the town, definitely, but it's, it's nicer, it's easier. Been here for bang on an hour. See you in a bit. It's not a very interesting video, I'm afraid. Three and a half hours later, and I'm still here. And some of the cabs move over on the right there, so we're getting close, but it's gonna be over four hours, I think. A bit more reading. It's a good book. Days and Nights of London now. When I pick people up sometimes, they say, why don't you just go work at Heathrow Airport a lot more? Because that rank looks really, really short. But what they don't realize is that the taxis on that final terminal rank, you know, there might be 10 taxis there. It looks like a little short rank, but they've been part of this much larger rank that could be up to 500 cabs uh, over at the feeder park. This is it, ladies and gents. I'm here on point at Terminal 2. So we're just waiting, see who comes. Chap in front just had one to Islington. 
Um, another chap had one down to Chislehurst, but that was a fixed price. So now we wait and uh, we'll see who, who comes next. Hopefully, something good. Hello, sir. You alright? Hope you're in. Bro, I've seen your YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, no way. Well, we're in. We're in. We're sorted. That's crazy. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was super cool. Almost five hours since I went to Heathrow. But what are the chances of that? I picked up a guy who watches my YouTube videos. It's such a small world. Like, I get it. Like, if I'm if I'm on the streets of London and people like recognise me or whatever. But to be at a specific terminal at a specific point of all those cabs that pass through Heathrow, man, that is weird. That is weird. So, but hey, that's cool. I had a really cool conversation with him. And um, if you're watching Philip, yeah. Keep smashing the masters and um, hope it all goes well. I'm gonna get to work and do a bit more. So what, 20 past five, one drop down. There's quite a few taxis floating around with their, with their lights on. We'll see, let's give us a go. Now that I'm back in town, I don't have much expectations for picking up a job. I head down towards the Iron Lung in the Pimlico area. And luckily I pick up this job on John Islip Street. Quick one, wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's carry on. I just had to. I just had to. I haven't looked for a little while. It was closing up Astral's Calf, and I just went past the closed sign um, to ask if I could have a buttered rock cake. Because these are just heaven. I mean, look at that. If you go down there, get yourself, that's half of it. Is it a cake? Is it a biscuit? We will never know, but they are delightful and I love getting them. Let's get back to work. Now I'm fully ammunitioned up. <laughs> Which street, sorry? Cock dick, okay, yeah. The only other good thing when it's really slack and quite quiet in Central is that I get to try out some of the new road restrictions. The city of Westminster has gone absolutely barmy with Covent Garden, so I'm trying out this part on Great Queen Street. At this time, it does go a bit slack and I scour the West End for a bit. And with a little bit of waiting, I managed to get a job from Selfridges to the St Pancras Renaissance Hotel. Once we're through these temporary traffic lights, the route is pretty simple. Just turn left into Wimpole Street, all the way up, up a Wimpole Street, Devonshire Place, gets us onto the Euston Road. We go to the Euston Road and we have to go over the Euston underpass. I know, it seems so strange, right? The whole idea of an underpass is it cuts out traffic lights. But no, 
Camden Council still haven't changed this stupid system. Cycle lane that isn't maintained and no cyclists ever use under the Euston underpass, meaning that it doesn't matter what time of day you come to the Euston underpass eastbound, it will always be full up with traffic. And you can see by me going over the underpass, I cut out all of this traffic. <laughs> After I've dropped this person off at St Pancras, I have a little explore around Clerkenwell. And luckily, as I come down Turnmill Street to get towards the meat market, I see a gentleman there hailing me down. He's got a small baby in a buggy at eight o'clock at night in Farringdon, so a uh, bit weird, but we'll go with that. He needs to get home. Quite a simple run. We run it all the way up St John Street. We just get into Islet and High Street, bare right Essex Road, right at St Peter's Street. Ever wondered why this part of St John Street is so wide and it has that weird little island in the middle? It was actually the site of Smithfield Taverns, like a, a courthouse that once sat in the middle where that island is. Yeah, five jobs. This is a real kipper, but um, I mean, it could have been worse. That guy just dropped off. He was on drugs or something. He came out of the pub, but he was like coherent, but not, it's, uh, his words weren't necessarily slurring. He was tripping over, he had a baby in a pushchair, a real small baby, and but his just sentences weren't making any sense. Yeah, he sounded all right when he was on the phone to his partner or whatever, but yeah, he's, I've dropped him off and made sure he got in the house that he was going into and his partner was there with the baby. Like, what, what, what do you do in that situation? I mean, I helped him sort of in and out with the pram. Um, that's it, and just made sure he got into, into that house. But let's continue on. I generally find that even if I've had a busy day, between eight o'clock and nine o'clock, there is like a natural slack. And that's because of people who have gone to restaurants, say seven o'clock, eight o'clock, or maybe they've gone to the theater, they're all kind of set. Like, no one's really moving around much at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. You generally have to wait till, like, 9 onwards and then 10 o'clock, definitely, because you get a lot of people out of the theatres. Just so happens, as I'm coming down Rosebury Avenue, there is a hand and the people are walking northbound. Yes. Yes. They want to go up to Stoke Newington, and as soon as they get in the cab, they explain the restrictions that are going on at Stoke Newington and where they want to be set. Once we're on Stoke Newit and Church Street, we begin to see the yellow signs of doom. All done, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Oh, London Borough of Hackney. This is so annoying. Another borough who just can't see sense. Do they not realise the importance of Stoke Newit and Church Street connecting green lanes to Stoke Newit and High Street? And then you can't even get up Lordship Road anymore. Like, it's just insane. I'm sure many people's highway code isn't that good. We can't get around and it's raining. So people who live on Lordship Road 
can't get to Lordship Road. You know, we'll cycle, I'll convert to a rickshaw, be fine. So now I've got to wiggle my way out of here, stick into the main roads, because you can't use any of the back streets or the rat runs. I might call it that, I think. Because it's kipper season, I'm trying to have my expectations super, super low. Would have been nice when I was at Heathrow to maybe get a couple of locals before getting one into town. That is a good way for that system to work. Um, but alas, it didn't. So I'm going to just drive in the general direction of home and see what happens, really. And that's it. That's another day in the life of me and a taxi. Starting off at Heathrow, ending up in Stoke Newington. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really recommend checking out more of my driving videos. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.